Hey guys, what's going on? This is Tony Benalla. And today's video, we're gonna talk about the cone of learning. And it's first brought to the market by Edgar Allen or Edgar Dale in 1946. And it's, it's throughout a lot of Harvard University studies. And uh, what it does, it just kind of goes over a lot about how we learn and the percentages of what we do and how it relates with how we learn and remember and do things, all right? So I'm gonna go over what's called the cone of learning. All right, the cone of learning, and what that pretty much consists of, it consists of percentages, as I mentioned, and the way that we do things. For example, about 10% of what we read, okay, we remember. Okay, because there's a lot of activities of what we do, as far as like when we do things, or we say things, or when things happen to us, or if we participate in activities. You know, there's a window of about two weeks, okay, that we're able to remember certain things. All right, and I'm gonna go over what percentages according to studies with Edgar Dale that we do remember things according to what we do okay so first of all what we're gonna do is we're gonna break this down into percentages all right so um, 90% okay 90% in two weeks basically in a two-week time span we will remember 90% of not only what we say but what we say what we say and do okay 90% of what we say and do. So for example, if we're talking to someone or if we're coaching someone and we're telling them about, say, the law of attraction, okay, and then we're also doing this in our own life, it's 90% of this is what we're, it's gonna, it's gonna entail in our life, it's gonna really go along with what we do and we're gonna remember it, we're gonna implement it in our lives and we'll become successful, right? So um, from there it goes down to 70%, okay? And as we do things, as we do less, or as we do different activities, the percentage from here is gonna go down. So we remember 90% of what we say and do, but 70% of what, of what we say, all right? And um, basically, if you say things and you don't do it, okay, in a two week time span, you're gonna forget about things, okay? You'll only remember 70% of what you say, okay? So 50%, of what we hear and see. Fifty percent of what we hear and see. Alright? You ever heard something? Okay? Like you, you you were at a convention and you were you heard like a positive speaker, say Les Brown or a uh, Zig Ziglar, you hear it right and then what they talk about you actually see it they give you an example of what's going on as they're talking about it right so you're hearing and seeing it after two weeks we remember 50 percent of that okay now if we break it down to just what we see what we see people do or other things around you after two weeks you'll remember 30 percent of what you do okay now as far as here if you just hear things it breaks it down to 20 percent of things we just hear. 10% of things we read, okay? So if you just read books, if you just read in a quiet room, read alone, right? And this is the most important part, and this is why I want to bring this up today, is because 10% of what we read, we only remember. So we forget 90% of the things that we read in the book. If we're in a room and we're just reading our favorite book or a personal development book, we'll lose focus on 90% not even remember anything after two weeks okay so why is that important because basically when you're reading a book and you only read it okay okay you have the least amount of percentage of doing anything with what you read okay now if you read it and you hear it okay and you see it for example if you if you hear somebody speaking about what you read and you also read it out loud into yourself. So as you read it, you hear your voice and it sends a different message into your mind and it comprehends in a different way. Okay, you will remember, okay, 20 plus 10, 30%, okay, of what you see. And the more you combine everything, as far as doing as well and saying, as you're coaching someone, you hear what you're saying and then, or you see someone doing what you're teaching, all right, and then you hear it and read it, you have the best chance in the period after two weeks of remembering what you learned, okay? 
And if you do that, then you can implement it more in your life and you can live every day going after these steps, okay, that are proven success principles to whatever, achieve whatever results that you want, all right? Now let's talk about uh, this right here, okay, the 90% and the 70% of what we say and do and 70% of what we say. Okay, usually these, um, we're, gonna, we're, we're gonna call these the nature of involvement, all right? Nature of involvement. Okay, so when we talk about 90 and 70%, this is, this is actually active. Okay, you're involved. Because you're saying it and you're doing it. There's actually a physical activity, what you're doing, all right? And it, according to the cone of learning, when this is active involvement, when we say and do, that's the best, okay? Now, when we talk about um, the hear and see, and the see and the hear and the read, okay, this is passive. All of this right here, this is passive. All right? Now, things like this, active, okay, these are like real things we do, uh, simulating real, um, real experiences in our lives, okay? These are all active. And then passive is stuff just like watching a demonstration, right? Or, um, or seeing, it, seeing, it, seeing it done, just like seeing it but not actually participating in it, or not really doing it, just actually observing it. Okay, that's passive, all right? And what we learn in the Harvard study in 1946 is that most of the valedictorians in school, right, they make straight A's, they become the smartest students, you know, in the class, but that doesn't necessarily translate into the real world. The real world is different than the world in academics. And a lot of people that graduate valedictorian not necessarily achieve the same results in the real world after graduation, all right? A study says that valedictorians maintain about a 3.6 average in college, but after that, that's pretty much all they do. Now they just mix in and blend in with everybody else, all right? So what am I trying to say here? I'm trying to say that, you know, valedictorians is pretty cool to have. I mean, you know, it's, pretty, it's a pretty cool status to have. I mean, you know, all that really says, though, is that you are good when you're graded by grades, when you're ranked by grades, and following a system and doing what's told and, and giving the right answers of what people expect, teachers expect in school and in, in the educational system, right? But according to a study in the Forbes 400 most uh, wealthiest people in the world, Okay, most of those people in the four, in the fortune uh, the Forbes 400 are college dropouts or never even attended college. All right? And it also says that the average person of college dropout, all right, in the Fortune 400, okay, their net worth is about 4.5 billion versus the people that actually finished college and has a collegiate degree is an average worth of about 1.5 billion. All right? Why is that? Well, here's why. Because a lot of the people that are valedictorians and make good grades at school, all right, these are they, they're the people that pretty much are here. Okay, they are good at this stuff. They're good at hear and see, hear and read, okay, so reading and ac academics, uh, hearing from a teacher, and seeing things done, okay, and doing it and doing it the way the system tells them to do it. Okay, but when it comes to time to create their own ideas, design their own imagination, you know. That's when this stuff comes into factor, okay? And this is where people are business owners, like those Steve Jobs, the Mark Zuckerbergs, the Robert Bransons. These are people that actually do what they say and they say what they do, all right? So these are the people that are actually here living in the fortune, the Forbes top 400 wealthiest people in the world with an average worth of 4.5 billion. And here lay what they said in the study that valedictorians who actually did good through school some of the smartest people and they run the corporate world well, but after college and maintaining about 3.6 GPA on average, okay, they all just kind of blend in and become just part of the working class, working world, wherever they just follow a system, okay, while these people right here, okay, have these people work for them, right? These people down here work, usually work for the business owners, the Fortune 500 company CEOs and founders and business owners, all right? So that's pretty much the cone of learning, guys. And I just want to let you know, once again, the credit is due to uh, Edgar Dale, a study in 1946. Just learn to say and do. Okay, if you want to become really successful in your business, you want to become an entrepreneur, okay, what we want to do here, guys, is we want to do what we say, we want to say what we do. And it doesn't hurt to always hear and see and read because we always recommend to condition your mind and to consistently read, okay, and to feed your mind the great things that will cause your subconscious mind to believe and then manifest the success in your life of what you desire, right? 
Okay, but it comes more than that. In order to put that in action, and in order to put your imagination and your dreams into reality, you're gonna have to do what you say. And that's gonna become an, become an active nature of involvement according to the cone of learning. All right guys, Tony Benalla, and I'll talk soon.